Hi guys, uh, welcome to GTN Abacus Learning. In the last session, we solved a problem related to eggs illustrates in an inclined rod. We modeled this rod using 3D finite elements in Abacus and obtained our results. Now, for those who have looked into their lecture notes would understand how this equation is derived for those who are still struggling, I can show a simple derivation here. We all know that the actual stiffness in a rod is given by A E by L. Now, the actual stiffness can be substituted as load upon displacement U, which implies or you can write P by A here means actual stress which is equal to now if you compare this with the equation here you'll find that E by L and U are the same we have these additional matrices here which provide the components of forces and displacements in the direction we are concerned about. Therefore, these matrices are just modifying the value of stress in the direction that we need. Otherwise, if this rod was straight, making an angle zero with the x-axis, then this term will be equal to one. So this is how the stress equation is derived. In today's session, we will be focusing on, so when you look at a truss, a truss is simply a combination of different rods which may be inclined to the x-axis by making a certain angle. If this triangle was a truss, then each element will be connected to the other element via pins. and these pins may be identified as A, B, and C. In these trusses, you'll only get axial forces due to some external loading. For example, if you have a loading like this, and let's say that this point is hinged and this one has a roller then there will be forces induced in element AB, BC and CA depending upon their orientation to x-axis or the direction of the force so this can be angle alpha beta and gamma. If this was force P, then you may get a force P1 here, P2 here, and P3 here. If we are looking in a global axis, then each of these ends a, B, and C be assumed to have degrees of freedoms in both X and Y direction. So we can have our degrees of freedom at A in these two directions, which will be the components of forces or displacements acting along AB. Similarly, we can label the degrees of freedom as therefore. If a truss has three nodes or three pins, then total will be equal to two times number of pins or joints. Therefore, if we try to find the stiffness matrix of this truss, then our stiffness matrix will be a matrix of 6 by 
6 in here as you see that only actual forces will be induced because there is no restriction in the change of the angle between the elements for example if this truss had a roller here as well instead of hinge if we apply force p then end a can move inward and and c can also move inward changing angle alpha to alpha dash and beta to beta dash and gamma to gamma dash so these angles will change depending upon our boundary condition and loading so theoretically there will not be any resistance to the rotation if we wanted to find the stiffness matrix for element a b we will have a 4 by 4 matrix because in element a b we have two pins where each pin has two degrees of freedom and similar goes for each of the other elements if you look into your lecture notes you'll find that the value of kb is given by this equation where a is your cross-sectional area e is elastic modulus and l is the length of the element l and m are the x and y component of the direction of your inclination of the element and theta is the angle made by the element with the x-axis you can put these values here and obtain your stiffness matrix for each element then you'll combine your matrices to form a global matrix kg which will be equal to summation of your individual element stiffness matrices depending upon the degrees of freedom then we can use our equilibrium equation where forces are corresponding to each degrees of freedom for example for pin a it will be f1x and f1y it will be equal to the displacement vector are the displacements corresponding to each degrees of freedom for example for a it will be u1x and u1y when you plug in your boundary conditions you can obtain your displacement and force response in the direction you have considered as global here the horizontal axis is x and vertical is y now let us look into our today's problem we will be looking at something like this where this can be x-axis this can be the y-axis this can be and a b and c and let's say ac makes an angle of 45 degrees with the x-axis let the length of ab be one meter bc be one meter and ac be root two meters let's say there's a force acting at this point in this direction b 100 kilo newtons so in this problem we may be asked to determine our, our reaction forces and displacements for this the elastic modulus for each element is 210 gpa and area for element a b and element b c be equal to 600 mm square and let the area for element ac be equal to 
six hundred root two mm square. So given all these conditions, you are asked to find your reaction forces and the displacements. First, we can follow the basic procedure. Let us redraw our truss. We can locate our pins and number them. As mentioned earlier, each of these will have their degrees of freedoms in the global x and y direction. So in this case, we'll get a global matrix of 6 by 6 and local matrices as 4 by 4. Now we can use this equation for each element and obtain our individual matrices and sum them up. Then you'll obtain your global matrix as this, where it is a symmetrical matrix. Now, if you are thinking of solving it directly by using the equilibrium equation as this, where represents forces in the corresponding degrees of freedom and u vector represent the displacements in the corresponding degrees of freedom then you might not be able to solve it because we can see at point c we have a roller that is inclined like this which will produce a reaction force in this direction which will have a component in each of this direction if you try to solve it using this and if you put in the boundary conditions you'll be assuming in the force vector that f3x and f3y are zero but in fact they are not therefore it is necessary to transform this matrix into a new matrix which defines that these elements are to be obtained in a new set of global axes which can be defined as x dash and y dash where x dash makes an angle of 45 degrees with the x axis and you will have your original y axis here which means our global reference frame which was this one has been rotated by an angle 45 degrees so as to obtain our reaction force in this direction. Now for this we have to define a new matrix which is known as transformation matrix T which will be equal to this where we have kept this matrix as a singular matrix because we don't need to transform or specify any rotation to the global axis however for this case where these are sine and cosine values of 45 degrees global axis is now rotated by an angle 45 degrees at node Three, you'll have to obtain your effective or net stiffness matrix as T is the transpose of your transformation matrix. Then you'll obtain your effective stiffness matrix as this, where new axis will be 3x dash and 3y dash. Then you can write your equilibrium equation as which will imply this. You can plug in your boundary conditions here. These boundary conditions make sense because now you are assuming that u2x and u3x dash can move as you can see in your figure that this is your x dash and it can move because roller can move in this direction and in this case also u2x can move 
which makes sense. Therefore, rotating your global axis or defining a new local axis for your element AC will help us solving this problem. Now you can put in your boundary conditions and your forces this where these values here in the stiffness matrix correspond to the values here highlighted in the yellow. Now you can solve this problem and obtain our solution and now if you substitute your values back into this equation you can obtain your forces as this f1x 50 f1y and this one equals to 70.7 while u2x will move in the positive direction by 1.191 mm and u3 will move in this direction by 0.561 mm so this is final position of the truss occurring at each ends now let us model this following the similar procedure in abacus and see what we get let's get it started we to make our parts first we go to 2d deformable wire we can put our part name let's say a b you can make this 5000 continue Our AB is 1 meter long. Done. Let's create our new part BC. For your element AC, you can either make a straight line and then rotate it in your assembly or what you can do here is you can make two lines like this which are both one meter long and you can join them like this and then you can delete them So, you don't have to rotate this in the assembly and you can get your exact dimension here. So click done. Now you have your three parts. Let us make our material, which is steel. We're given 210,000 MPa. You can assume it to be 0 0.26. Click OK. Then we have to make our profiles. We can select rectangular. That's for section AB and BC, where you have to specify our area, which is 600. So I'll make this 20 and this one 30. So the total area is 600. And I have to make a new profile for AC as well. So this will be 600 root 2 which is equal to 848.528 I can divide this by 30 so the other dimension will be 28.284 30 28.284 then we have to create our sections as well we can create our section AB and BC which are the same you can just click on beam select your profile six okay and we make our new section as well for AC click on beam two six make it steel our profile name will be AC 
okay now we go to our parts a b and we assign our sections so a b will have a section this one and at the same time we can assign our beam orientation select all of it click done we'll hit enter and okay and you can go here and then you can go to orientations for your material orientation click done use default click ok that's it now let's go to our next element ac because section assignment you can assign our section as ac material orientation And you can assign our beam section orientation. And our final element BC. Now we have assigned our sections to each of these parts. Let us go to assembly and assemble them. So I'll take my part AB first and I'll move this, this point right at the center of our space. I'll rotate this AB about this point by 90 degrees now this is our ab now let's get our bc okay you can move this one right at the top there and then you can bring your ac in and translate this to its position here now this is our assembly but we have to specify that each of these elements are connected by pins for this we have to make our connector sections so we go to connector sections click on multiple point connectors and click on pin and say ok then we go to assembly then we have to create our wire features so click on wire feature click on add you can select the first point and the second point by clicking on the same location for this one as well first point second point first point and second point click done say okay now it has created your wire sections then we go to assembly and go to connector assignments so you can select all of this it will select all of your connector wires that we created previously click done now this is our connector section one that we made last time which is pin mpc pin so say okay so each of these are now pinned now let us go to steps static static journal Please make this value as high as possible. You can make this one 0.001 and this one as low. Click OK. Then you can check your field output. We will be focusing on displacement and forces, but just select on defaults. That's all right. Please make sure that you have one here. And now we go to our loads this is a point load which is a concentrated force and is applied at this end click done now for we are looking at a global axis here you can see global global means this one right here and x direction refers to one so you can put hundred thousand 
that is 100 kN and then CF2 as 0 or say okay so this is your force now let's go to our boundary conditions pinned condition so select displacement or rotation so select this point click done now you can select both of them and make it zero you'll see that this is now hinged now let us make another one which is a roller one select continue select this end done we are only restraining the displacement in the y direction so u2 can be zero and say okay and that's your roller now for roller 2 which is this point here you can select it click done now in this case you will see that global axis refers to x and y here which is horizontal and vertical and if we specify u1 and u2 as 0 or either of them as 0 it will mean that we are restraining our motion either in x direction or y direction which is not the case here that's why like we did in our theory we made a new axis which is rotated by 45 degrees to the initial global axis we also have to do the same here so we can create our new datum axis let us say that it is datum axis 2 click continue so select it says select a point to be the origin we can just select this is our point of origin and select a point to be on x axis let us select this one now you'll see that we have formed a new axis where x axis is in line with the axial direction or inclination of this element ac so you can select a point to be on the xy plane you can select this one or this one that's it so we have made a new axis here we can select our axis to click edit go to datum list and select this one or you can you want to directly select from here is the displacement in the new x axis and u2 in the new y axis so we are restraining u2 at this point so click ok now you'll see that we have a roller facing this way now this is our final model and there's one thing we have missed we have to mesh these elements go to mesh you can go to part a b so since this is a meter you can just select this one to be 10 say okay mesh it go to the next part pc see it part 10 mesh it final ac see it part 10 mesh part yes and we mesh this one as well now go to assembly if you go to mesh now you can see that everything is green and everything is meshed now let us run our analysis you can save this file we can run our analysis here cross continue okay and submit okay monitor all right now dismiss and go to results select on rear file and let's see our displacements you can click contour now you can see that this part here is in red which means it has moved 1.190 millimeters and this is in green which may be around 5 
0.5 or 0.6 millimeter here to see the directions you can click on this now you'll see that there will be many values here you click on this one and change the density to low slightly higher now you can see your contour and values at different locations now you'll see this one has moved by 1.19 millimeters and this one well it's still not getting that one so you can just go here again and slightly increase the density have which is 0 0.561 our solution 1.191 and 0 0.561 which is same as that we obtained in the abacus now let us look into our reaction forces we can change the density to high you'll see that this is 70.7 .7 kN this is also 70.7 .7 kN now when you change this direction to reaction force 1 in the horizontal direction you will get this as 50 and this one as 50 if you look in the vertical direction you will get this one as 50 and this one as 50 as well this is the resultant acting here and acting there now you can see your motion as well you can change the speed of your motion and this one and let's see our contour and we can play it you can see it moving like this where this is the final similar to what we obtained here we learned how to model trusses using wire elements in abacus the wire features for this kind of simple structures can be a good option unless you are looking into the micro details of it in the next session we will be looking into modeling beams having different boundary conditions and loading scenarios thank you for watching till the end please share comment and subscribe to this channel thank you